Richard, thank you. Excellent analysis as well. Really appreciates it. Richard Moss there, the BBC's political editor for the North East and Cumbria, who is in Hartlepool at the moment for that by-election result. And when it comes, we'll have it for you here on BBC Radio 5 Live. We'll bring it as soon as it comes, as it's confirmed. As Richard was saying, there, it does seem as if the Labour um, side have already conceded that uh, seat to the Conservatives. We'll wait and see, get confirmation of that. It'll come maybe during our business programme, Wake Up to Money, which starts at five o'clock. So keep listening for that. Meanwhile, let me welcome back an old friend of the programme, Professor Andrew Russell, who is head of politics at the University of Liverpool. And you've been up all night, as always, when there's an election. I know it's your thing. But, you know, we, we, we saw yesterday 48 million people eligible eligible uh, to vote on 5,000 different jobs. A huge day then for British democracy and many of the papers were describing it as Super Thursday. My question to you is Super for whom? <laughs> Um, well, good morning. Good morning, Dalton. Yes, no, absolutely. I mean, the the uh, the, the most um, extensive use of the uh, of the vote across the UK since uh, since the last general election. You may remember that last year's uh, local elections were, were cancelled because of because of the COVID pandemic. So it is a uh, it, it is a uh, 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 exactly as you say the super super, super Thursday. Uh, it looks like it's not going to be a super Friday for. Uh, for uh, uh, um, uh, for certain politicians, but you have to remember, particularly with local elections, um, that uh, we get caught every year. I mean, the numbers of years that I've, I've sat in the Five Live studio calling early results, saying it's a bad night for Party X, and then the following day, you know, results will come in, particularly uh, particularly uh, results in the metropolitan areas and uh, places like London, which go completely the opposite way. So, so th there is a bit of a, a, a mismatch there. And the other thing I would say is. You know, a lot of people were eligible to vote today, including uh, um, 16 and 17 year olds in, in Wales for the, fir uh, for the first time in the, for, the, for the Senate elections. Um, um, but what is perhaps unknown at this stage uh, is just how many of them actually uh, actually uh, actually did turn out to vote. So just how popular um, elections are with the with the, popu with the population and listening to some of the callers earlier on, it seemed that some people you know didn't know what they were voting for and so therefore didn't uh, uh, didn't actually cast the ballot. You know, uh, I think it was Mohammed in Birmingham couldn't you know didn't you know couldn't get to his polling station and obviously didn't, you know didn't didn't organise a postal vote or anything or a proxy vote or anything like that. So people just might not. Not have been engaged. Uh, we've got the official turnout from Hartlepool, which is 42%. Now that's not bad for a by-election, but it's not particularly good either. So it's it's around about two in five of the eligible voters uh, have actually cast a cast a vote in what is, after all, a pretty high-profile electoral campaign. There what will we... be a pandemic factor, though, won't there? I mean, yeah. the, which will no doubt affect the numbers of people who voted. Will it affect the way that people who did vote voted, do you think? Um, I, I think it's pretty likely to have affected... <laughs> the pandemic has, I think, affected the way we think about pretty much everything. Uh, uh, and so, therefore, it, it, it would be amazing if that didn't affect the way people thought about politics. And certainly in terms of, you know, if, if you think of by-elections in particular as a kind of thermostatic kind of health check on the state of the government, how, the, how are the government doing? Uh, you know, well, what what better test uh, uh, than than the pandemic? And and those people who have been saying over the past few weeks that you know when when there's been an awful lot of heat on the government over you know the the, the so-called cash for curtains affair and the, and and the, and the lobbying uh, uh, scandals that 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 that, that we have been uh, uh, focused on, they've been saying what what the public really are interested in is the is the rollout of the vaccine. What the what the public are really interested in is the recovery of the, of the economy post pandemic. And those people, uh, uh, I think, are the uh, you know perhaps might hold the sway in. in um, uh, in contests like the Hartlepool, uh, the Hartlepool by-election, and the, the narrative uh, for tomorrow, you know, less, you know, <laughs> to all intents and purposes, we're pretty convinced that the Conservatives have won, have won Hartlepool. Now, that is a remarkable achievement uh, um, for a, a, a sitting government to take a uh, a seat off the uh, opposition is a pretty remarkable achievement. I mean, it's it's only happened. 
uh, 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 twice in 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 recent times, but the most recent of which was 2017 uh, in a, in a place called Copeland in Cumbria. So it wasn't it's it's perhaps not that unprecedented. And and if you look at the profile of the types of places that the Conservatives have been making ground from Labour in recent years. Up to uh, including the Brexit uh, uh, referendum, but not just the Brexit referendum. And you can see the Conservatives making inroads into some of those northern Labour heartlands, particularly the towns rather than the cities. And if you look in the, uh, if you look, uh, you know, if you look across the region, if you look across the north, uh, the, the northeast and the northwest, you will see lots of those towns that have gone to the the, the, the so-called red wall. And as uh, 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 and, and as we've uh, and as we've just heard from Richard, that you know. Um, uh, Labour were probably saved in Hartlepool in the last general election by uh, uh, by a Brexit party candidate who took uh, uh, who who took ten thousand votes. Uh, uh, the uh, Conservative candidate took eleven thousand votes, and, and Labour only got fifth. And, and Labour only got fifteen thousand votes. And if you if you add the Conservative and Brexit party together, um, they would have uh, comfortably beaten uh, uh, um, um, the, the, the Labour incumbent. Because there's no Brexit party this time in the general election, it looks pretty much like those, those votes or the, the portion of those votes have gone pretty much to the Conservatives. The Conservatives will, of course, play up this fantastic achievement of winning a winning an opposition seat during a uh, 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 as an incumbent government during a by uh, in a by election, and be but perhaps it's 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 although it might be a big electoral shock, perhaps it's less of a surprise than we might otherwise think. Somewhat unusually, there's a cornucopia of possible election types or, you know, uh, indeed, yeah. in, in, as well as local elections, we've got mayoral elections in some yeah. of uh, the big cities. Well, we have, and yeah. also we've got the Scottish referendum, well, not Scottish referendum, but that's the way the SNP would see it, a, referend a referendum on Scotland in their electoral seats. There. It does seem as if there's a lot of different... Uh, things to choose or positions to choose from in these elections. Hartlepool by-election is going to be the focus on a sort of a Westminster bubble kind of uh, aspect, but really all these other local elections are arguably much more significant than that because they deal with where Britain is today, if you like. Yeah. It gives us a sense of where people are coming from, like you said, if the pandemic has affected our thinking and, and so on. Uh, I wonder what, uh, how the outcome, wh whatever the outcome of the elections is, you know, we'll boil it down as we always do to, you know, um, whether Labour won it or the Conservatives won it or Lib Dems won it or whoever it might be. And I wonder if that outcome doesn't hide the real Britain, you know, the effect of job losses, closures and all that sort of stuff. Or will yeah. that be significant this time around? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. We have a plethora of, of, of elections. I mean, it's part of the reason why it was the Super Thursday. There were local, local elections throughout, uh, um, throughout most of England, and there were more councillors up because of the postponement of last year's local elections as well. We had uh, elections for the Scottish Parliament, uh, uh, and for the and for the the Welsh Assembly, the Synod, um, uh, police and crime commissioner uh, elections in many parts of, of England, and metropolitan mayor uh, elections in many in many of the big cities, uh, and because of the pandemic and the extra security around the pandemic, they are taking forever to count the votes. Uh, for the life of me, I don't quite know why they don't pre-count the, the the postal votes and it might speed some of this sort of, sort of stuff up but 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 here we are um but so the the, the by-election from Hartlepool is, is it, uh, the result will come in uh, uh, we think around 5 30 today and the news tomorrow morning will all be about that so it'll be so the the news agenda will be framed by Keir Starmer has failed to hold on to uh, uh, hold on to Hartlepool. What does this say about the direction of the Labour Party? If they're not making gains against the Conservatives, you know, has Keir Starmer actually advanced Labour on or, or, on the position that, the, the, that they had under Jeremy Corbyn? He was very much the change candidate, promising to take uh, to, to lead a Labour revival. That looks like it's failed. If you go forward over the weekend, though, and once the votes start to come in on those Metro mayors, we fully expect Andy Burnham to win uh, to, to retain the uh, uh, Greater. Manchester uh, 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 mayor seat, Steve Rotherham to retain uh, uh, the the, um, the the Merseyside uh, uh, the Merseyside City Region uh, mayor, uh, the Liverpool City Region mayor in, in Merseyside, uh, and Sadiq Khan in London, and, and so and and they will probably be much more 
uh, popular, uh, 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 much more positive results for, for for Labour. Now, the way that the way that politicians work, right, uh, 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 is that you know just in England alone, the parties will have a set of uh, expectations management. So, in the last few days, it's been noticeable how. A government, uh, a government, leading government politicians have been playing down their chances of winning Hartlepool, whereas all of the local campaigners have been telling journalists, actually, the Tories are going to win this seat quite comfortably. Uh, and so, so what the what the front benches have been doing? They've been trying to dampen expectations so that they can present, so, so they can present the victory. Uh, uh, in the Hartlepool on Friday morning, as uh, uh, as, a, as as a, a seismic earthquake. Now, a similar thing will happen with Labour uh, uh, on, on Saturday when the results come in from the uh, from the mayoral victories in in the Liverpool City region, in Greater Manchester, and in London. And I assume that they're all going to be retained by Labour. Um, there will be, of course, uh, a focus on well, well, Labour coming back in its uh, coming back in its uh, intellectual heartlands in the in the metropolitan cosmopolitan areas of of, of London. Uh, there'll be a lot of focus on the West Midlands and the the the, the, the mayor there. That's a West Midlands is a kind of bellwether a contest between Conservatives and Labour, and then of course you've got Scotland, uh, where everybody's assuming that the S well, the, the SNP will undoubtedly uh, be the largest uh, win and be the largest party, but it'll be about the size of their victory. Uh, and then in Wales, it's really about who's going to be the second party. So you, you know there are a number of ways that you can that, that, that you can slice this up and you can look at it, and and the parties will present different. Uh, um, 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 different kind of focuses, depending on what they want us to, to concentrate on. Um, but the, the central point remains: there have been a number of different elections for a number of different for a number of different uh, uh, types of politician, quite often with different electoral systems. Uh, 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 and so, if, if you voted for a metro mayor, for instance, you had you, you had two votes: you had a first choice and a second choice. If you voted in if you voted in in, in the Scottish uh, or, or, or Welsh. Uh, um, or, 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 or Welsh uh, assembly elections, you had uh, you had two votes: one for a party list and one for a constituency list. If you voted in in uh, uh, if, you, if you voted for the, the local elections in England or in the in the Hartlepool by election, you just had a, a straight familiar first past the post election. And people vote for different parties in you know in different elections, sometimes even on the same day. Uh, and the voters of Hartlepool, as, as, as Richard Moss just said, have the chance today to vote in a number of different elections for the Teesside mayor for. Instance, uh, as well as for the uh, as well as for their for for, the, for, for their new MP, uh, and they uh, and they and, and they could well have voted for different parties uh, on that basis. They might have voted for exactly the same party, but they would have voted in different ways because it's a different electoral system. Why isn't Labour working? And to quote a a slogan from the past, or at least why can't Keir Starmer? lay a glove on Boris Johnson, seemingly. We're hearing tonight, just before yeah. four o'clock, we heard that Harlow has swung, Harlow and Essex has swung from Labour to Conservative control. Seven seats changed hands there. And staying in Essex, I know these are just a, a few, a really small number of the constituencies or the areas that went uh, and uh, in terms of local elections were voted upon. But then we hear staying in Essex, and Essex arguably was Labour once upon a time, but it is that mm -hmm. uh, demographic that working class made good, often enough. Uh, South End there in Essex is staying in no overall control, but the Conservative group there has taken three further seats on the council. And in Sunderland, North East again, maybe part of the road, Red Wall or not, a Labour hold, but a loss of nine seats in the council. Yeah. I remember Sunderland famously voting for Brexit, being the first... Um, I think, constituency to declare for Brexit when we had the Brexit uh, vote. But uh, despite all the Prime Minister's problems, remember, this is a Prime Minister, this is an election that comes uh, days after all the kerfuffle about his yeah. wallpaper in Downing Street or wherever it might have been. And Keir Starmer doesn't seem to be able to make an impression whatsoever. If we just talk about two main parties, why not? Yeah, well, I mean, I, th I think that's that, that is a, a fairly undeniable point. I mean, if if you look at where, look at the party that Keir Starmer inherited, there was very definitely uh, uh, um, the promise that, that that he would be able to cut through and to reach the parts of the electorate that that had decoupled from Labour in twenty nineteen, uh, uh, and whether that was a, a kind of um, uh, 
the chance to uh, um, revert to a kind of new Labour type of electoral strategy, capturing Middle England uh, uh, or, or whatever. Well, yeah, you know, that doesn't seem to have been particularly successful from the results that we, the, 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 the council results that we've had uh, so far. And as I say, I suspect the uh, mayoral elections in in the West Midlands, uh, uh, which will come through tomorrow. Um, um, but also in the Labour heartlands, the the Red Wall areas, the areas that the Conservatives won from. Uh, one from Labour, pretty much for the first time in, in 2019. Although some of those, some of some of that, some of that transition to the Conservatives had been a fairly long time coming. And I think that one of the things that you can see in there is is in terms of a process. And you see a process in many of those seats, many of those working class Labour heartlands. Uh, um, uh, northern town seats um, with with a, a very strong record of of voting for of voting for leaving the European Union in the 2016 referendum uh, and you saw just prior to that you saw perhaps you know pretty strong showings by 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 new parties challenging labor when these were safe labor seats in the 2010s so uh, uh, quite often, you'd see uh, a large UKIP vote in 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 in, in, cer in, in certain areas, uh, um, uh, uh, and you know, often put down as a kind of protest vote. Often put down as a kind of a, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 but uh, often put down as a kind of you know, a wasted vote in many of these uh, many of these heartland areas. But there were significant blocks of voters either switching directly from Labour to UKIP or switching from traditional Labour supporters who perhaps weren't voting because because there had been low turnout in many of these places, you know, getting re-energised in politics by going to going to UKIP uh, in the in the 2010s. And what seems to happen is that it is that that decoupling from Labour towards UKIP then provides a halfway house that enables those UKIP voters to then transfer to the Conservatives. And that's what we saw in 2017, but then in particularly in 2019. Now, Labour ran a very, a surprisingly good election in 2017 in getting their core vote out, but they were kind of helped by uh, in, 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 by by the kind of a, a, a UKIP and then in 2019 by the Brexit Party split, splitting that kind of a, a, a Brexit vote. So you, so you, could, you could see what the Conservatives would do, would, would would do well in those areas and a kind of long-term trend. However, you know, Keir Starmer's promise was to take, you know, was to reconnect with Labour voters, uh, and that doesn't seem to have been a message to it that that's resonated just yet. Now, you could say. Perhaps he hasn't gone far enough. Perhaps he, you know, you know, he's trying to ride two horses. He's trying to keep the kind of uh, the 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 metropolitan cosmopolitan support that means that Labour will romp home in London. At the same time, you know, the you know the the, the remain vote in much of the uh, in much of the the, the the kind of big cities. At the same time, reconnecting with the Leave vote in some of those Labour uh, in some of those Labour heartlands. That's really difficult. The whole pandemic politics is really difficult. You know, you know, you know, Keir Starmer has never told a joke in Prime Minister's questions because his whole premise has been about, you know, being serious and, and holding the government to account. That's the way, you know, it, you know, that means that, he, you know, there's something. Now, I don't know whether he whether he's actually a, a funny guy and is capable of uh, is capable of doing that type of thing. But he just means he's a different type of politician to the one that we to, to the ones that we're used to. Uh, and that is. You know, it's not cutting through the way the way that he, I think, expected to be able to cut through, and the way I think that the Labour Party expected uh, a change to occur. Uh, and and of course, you know, several, you know, lots of people within the Labour Party, you know, you know, were disappointed by the end of the the kind of Corbyn era. And you know, lots of Corbyn supporters are saying, look, look, you, you know, you told us you could, you know, you told us we were the problem, but actually, it's the Labour brand that's the problem. Now, you know, I mean, I've been an, an academic here. For, for, for been an academic for, for for thirty years, I've been, you know, lecturing on 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 British politics and the stuff that we used to know. A very famous quote from the nineteen sixties that said that class was the basis of British politics; all else was embellishment and detail. And, you know, and even though it looked like class was declining as an influence, we still knew that it was the most important factor driving individual driving the way that people thought about politics and the parties that they chose to vote for. By 2019, that's no longer true. If you want a, a single signal to predict why people vote, it's, you no longer look at class, you look at age. 
right? Uh, and you might look at uh, you, you might look at uh, uh, um, um, uh, related uh, uh, factors such as educational qualifications, or, or you know, or or or, uh, or, or, or type of uh, 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 you know, public or private sector employment, something like that, right? Um, but class, you know, the, the idea that labour were labour were predominantly the working class party and the Tories were predominantly the middle class party, that's gone. Uh, uh, um, uh, and for the first time ever, you know, the old-fashioned measures of class, which I think, uh, you know, most of us would think are are, are kind of are, are kind of unreliable anyway. And the, the cues that we get on an everyday level from class are not the same as our parents and grandparents got. So why would we expect them to to still have the same kind of influence on the way that we think we, we pick our politics? Mm -hmm. um, but but the way we measure class in terms of the, the, the in terms of the the, the C twos and the DEs, they plumped marginally but uh, but significantly for the conservatives in the 2019 general election and it seems today from the early results um, um that that process is continuing so lay so the conservatives have diluted the inbuilt uh, uh, uh class support that labor have in those heartlands and they've managed to to to, to put an offer to some of those areas particularly those that voted to to leave the European Union in 2016 that labor have not been able to win back and and, and actually it's it, one of the lessons that labor might have is it's just going to you know there's no quick fix to this and actually labor finds itself in a very very difficult electoral position it has two distinct uh, 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 core constituencies you know uh, uh, and whilst it might be main, making ground in that kind of metropolitan you know city uh, uh, city ci city based kind of politics and it may act be and it will be strengthening its grip i i, I predict in london uh, tomorrow uh, tomorrow and saturday and, and and places like manchester um uh, its ability to connect to places uh, to places uh, to places outside of those cities uh, is actually is actually weakening and that is a real problem because it's really hard for them to play uh, to play both cards simultaneously for the conservatives you know uh, i mean this will this will th this will just be seen as a triumph and 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 conservatives will be reassured that the controversy that the government has been in over the, over the pandemic over the conduct of the pandemic and and particularly you know all the scandals about the, 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 the not working track uh, uh, track and trace systems and the and the uh, you know and the contracts for for for, for crime is and then all of the uh, uh, and then all of the, the the kind of lobbying scandals that we've seen recently uh, culminating in who paid for the refurbishment uh, when of the prime minister's uh, the prime sure, minister's sure. flat yeah. none of that seems to have cut through yeah we, we don't need to go back over that one I, I think you know to sum up um, <laughs> they better start swimming the Labour Party or they'll sink like a stone because the times they are a changing uh, Professor Russell really appreciate your contribution Professor Andrew Russell from the University of Liverpool. It's 4.33. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Yeah, the BBC News on 5 Live. Counting has taken place after a day of elections in England, Scotland and Wales.